I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and this is the Meze Audio Empyrean Mark II. This is a $3,000 headphone that I'm going to go ahead and say up front, I think this thing sounds almost as good as it looks, and, well, just look at this thing. This is a very, very good looking headphone, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get into what I think more about the sound in a little bit, but I guess just up front... I have been to now a number of audio shows, and one thing that I've kind of learned over these visiting these audio shows and listening to a lot of headphones that cost $2,000, $3,000, $6,000 and more is that, well, obviously there are diminishing returns when it comes to sound improvements. Things can continue to get better, but honestly, at that price point, Headphones start to differentiate themselves more in maybe the technology. Maybe they're using a unique driver configuration that gives you some aspect of sound that you can't get in a cheaper headphone using more traditional driver technologies. Or maybe there's a headphone that really leans into just extracting every last bit of detail from your sound. Or in some cases, and I think Meze is a really good example of this, it's leaning into the physical aspect of headphone ownership and just giving you something that's beautiful, that you want to behold, that you want to wear. And honestly, again, that's really what Meze has been good at. A number of their headphones, honestly, at all price points that they do, they've got just some of the absolute best build quality. But when it comes to sound, they sound okay. The Imperium 2, I think this one actually sounds, this is the best sounding Meze I've heard, okay? And again, I'll talk more about exactly what I think about the sound here, but just up front, this is a headphone that I think sounds as good as you would expect of the price point, all right? Um, but before we get too deep into this, we will start talking about the build quality, the physical form factor, and then we'll get into talking about the sound and maybe some comparisons here with uh, my favorite headphone that I've got, the Odyssey MM500, uh, and then I'll give you a score at the end so you know exactly what I think about the Empyrean 2. Uh, but I guess before we get into that, quick shout out to Meze Audio for sending this guy in for review. It's on loan. I've had it for the past couple of weeks. And I've been listening to it, comparing it with the stuff that I've got in hand. So let's talk about it. All right. So uh, yeah, let's again, like I said, let's just start with the physical stuff. And I am I apologize if I'm going to continue gushing about how beautiful this headphone is because it's a pretty stunning looking headphone. And it doesn't just look good. It also functions and feels fantastic as well because all the materials on this thing are nice and premium. Uh, you've got these metal surrounds here for the ear cups, the ear cup backs. While it does kind of look like a closed back headphone, this is actually an open back headphone. So yes, it will bleed audio uh, if you're listening to this around other people. Just a note, it's not the most open headphone. There are other head headphones like the hyphen and egg shape stuff that I find is even more open. Like it almost feels like you're not wearing anything. This will occlude some sound, but really just expect your traditional open back headphone experience. Um, okay, let's go back to the build materials. Like these, these yokes here are a nice, I'm guessing aluminum of some sort. The headband uh, just on these little rods that slide just with friction. Uh, I guess a small complaint here is that because these things adjust with just friction and it's completely smooth, there's no notches or anything like that. I did find that, you know, over time, they can kind of work themselves out of your exact setting. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of the beast with a design like this. It's not the only headphone that does it. Uh, and it's not even necessarily a bad thing because you've got infinite adjustability. But the downside is that it doesn't hold its position as well as something that has clicks. Now, up here at the top, this was interesting. I didn't expect this. It looks like they're using a real carbon fiber for the headband. Whereas a lot of headbands, headbands are using like a steel band. And um, ostensibly that is to reduce weight on this thing or maybe just make it look extra cool. I think it does both. Um, because yeah, overall this is a surprisingly lightweight headphone. Uh, and I will do a fit demonstration in a bit, but not just is it lightweight. It's a very, very comfortable headphone probably partly because of the weight. Um, you've got a, you know, a loose leather strap up here and you've got very deep ear cups, which I'll show you here. <clears throat> the headphone does actually come with a couple of different ear pads. This is the Alcantara pad over here on the left. And this is their duo pad, which is like a hybrid design over here on the right. The hybrid pad is actually a little bit deeper fitting than the Alcantara pad. And you can tell the Alcantara pad is slightly tilted where it's a little bit thicker at the back than it is at the front. Whereas the duo pad is just the same uniform 
thickness all the way around. So it does fit a little bit differently. Although I will say on my head, I would not make my decision between these ear pads based on the fit. They both fit outstanding. Um, obviously there is plenty of room in there for an ear, uh, at least my ears. And um, yeah, I don't know. That is the general build tour. I guess I will call out real quickly the terminations down here. So this is not a Bluetooth headphone. I have it disconnected from the cable just for presentation purposes, uh, but it does connect via a little mini XLR cable connection, pretty standard connector that you find on some other headphones. Uh, and in fact, they included, I believe, three cables with uh, the headphone. Uh, again, this is a loaner unit, so I didn't unbox this, but I assume that these are what you get with the retail package. And um, I guess the last thing I'll mention before I talk about the cable specifically is that they are mounted on a little bit of an angle here, which just keeps the cable from bumping into your shoulders and it moves it a little bit away from your shoulders as you wear it. I think that's generally a good thing. Um, okay, before the cables too, let's, let's actually give you a fit demonstration so you can see what this thing looks like on my head. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is kind of a big headphone and it is, you know, it's a, it's a big fitting headphone and I think it looks fantastic while maybe on the head, it's certainly a look. And some people get self-conscious about this sort of thing. I think you should probably get over it because you look, you look awesome with this, with this headphone. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, it's very lightweight, um, rests comfortably. And the other thing about this headphone, this is actually a thing my wife noticed when I had her sample the headphone. I like to torture her and have her try my headphones every once in a while. Um, but yeah, we both noticed that the, the clamp on this headphone is actually really just quite polite. Uh, it doesn't, it's not overly aggressive in crushing your head and yet I get a nice even seal. So while the ear pads are on the large side, they're not so large that I have issues, you know, getting a good solid seal here at the bottom of my ear. There are some other headphones like the aforementioned hyphen egg shaped headphones where I find that the taller ear cups can make it. So it's just, if your head's of a certain size, it's probably not going to get a good seal. Whereas these I think will fit more people more consistently. Uh, anything else to talk about the fit? I mean, I guess, Let's go back to the table real quick. And I kind of just want to call out the flexibility of this design. And you've got the headphones, the ear cups on a tilt, right? And they are spring loaded, which I like, just kind of tidy. Um, but then there's also complete front rotation, complete back rotation. They rotate independently. The headband obviously is nice and springy. And I, basically this headphone has all the adjustability and, and flexibility to fit a lot of heads really well. And, Frankly, I'd be surprised if this didn't fit you amazingly well, all right? Um, one of the better fitting headphones I've ever worn, one of the most comfortable headphones I've ever worn, and dare I say, one of the most attractive headphones I've ever worn. So yeah, let me just check my notes and see if there's anything else I wanted to say about the build. I guess <clears throat> maybe if I'm complaining about it, I wish that there was a little bit more than black to break up the look, but I don't know, that's a pretty small complaint, and I don't even know that it's necessarily a complaint, just it could maybe use a little bit of a breakup. But yeah, it's a very, very handsome looking headphone, the Empyrean 2. But um, let's get into talking now about the sound here on this headphone, and maybe I'll, I'll mention the cables briefly, because here we've got a single ended 3.5 millimeter cable, and then both of these are balance cables. Now, the reason you might want to use the balance cables is if you need extra power. And I will say that the Empyrean 2 is not a super easy headphone to drive, which is interesting because a lot of Meze's other headphones, they seem to optimize them for portable use. This headphone, I would say drivability wise, is pretty comparable to a Sennheiser HD 600 or 650. If you're familiar with those, they're not super hard to drive, but you'll probably want to run them off of uh, an amplifier rather than just running them off your phone. That said, I did listen to this thing off my MacBook a lot using the standard 3.5 millimeter connection and had plenty of headroom. If I was getting into like deep EQ or something like that, I would definitely want more power. Um, but just to kind of set your expectations, the balance stuff is here. It's nice if you want it, if you're into all the balance connections and, and, and sources and stuff like that. But if you're into just running things off your MacBook or even like a moderately powered digital audio player, you're going to have no issues here with the Empyrean 2. So let's talk about the sound specifically and what it sounds like. And 
I did mention that this thing comes with two different pads. It comes with the Alcantara pads and the Duo pads, and it's not just a fit and materials difference. There is actually a pretty noticeable difference in the sound. I'm going to start by just describing the sound signature with the stock Duo pad, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the Alcantara pad does to the sound. Um, but yeah, just the stock sound out of the box, I would say kind of reminds me of like a warm tilted hyphen sound, right? So if you're used to a hyphen sound, you're used to kind of like a, a clinical, neutral, somewhat bright tilted sound signature um, that leans heavy on detail. And I would say that that kind of rough description you could apply here to the Imperium 2, but you have to then also add in this extra um, kind of mid-bass boost into it. And it's interesting the way the bass boost is, pre is, is added to it. It doesn't really add so much like a, a thickness or um, like a denseness to the sound. Like it still comes across like bright and airy from that upper treble extension that you get here on the Imperium 2. But it does add just a little bit of extra richness and warmth to it that makes it not sound quite so clinical as you might expect of the Hyphemans. Now, with the Alcantara pads here, that can change because the I found that the sound with the Alcantaras was almost exactly like a Hyphaman type sound, like what you would expect. It removes a lot of that warmth and it just gives you kind of that high-end presentation, um, making it more of a clinical sound. Now, I will say that the treble on this is, the upper treble is a little bit on the shimmery side, which tends to be the case with a lot of these high-end headphones that have that high-end treble emphasis, but, even with the duo pads or the Alcantara pads, I didn't have any of like the, the issues that I have with treble sensitivity with like the, the Hyphaman Aria, for example. That's a headphone that I can't really listen. Like it sounds very resolving and, and it's very engaging in a way, um, but I have difficulties listening to it for more than five or 10 minutes at a time because the treble is just kind of sharp. Whereas this kind of gives you a very similar sound signature but with a softer edge on the treble that I generally found to be more pleasant, if not quite as resolving and sharp in its, uh, in its imaging distinction, I suppose. Um, and just check my notes real quick to see if there's anything else that I wanted to mention about the sound. I mean, again, I, because it's Meze, I kind of expected it to be a warmer, denser sound, and maybe it was because of what I had heard about the Imperium, the original Imperium, um, and some of their other headphones, but really this is just kind of like a pretty well-balanced, neutral-ish tune that has, yes, some warmth added to it, but it's really not the dominating character of it. I really do think that the clean um, top end on this becomes more so the dominating character of the sound on the Imperium 2. And then with the pad swap, you're just kind of like balancing how much of that richness versus clinical sound do you want. Now, that is the Imperium 2 in isolation, but like I mentioned, I do have my favorite headphone on hand for comparison. This is the Odyssey MM500. And now price-wise, this is not quite in the same territory, but it's certainly not cheap. I think it's like a $1,700 headphone. I actually forget. Um, but this is certainly not cheap at all either. Um, both of these are planar magnetic driver headphones. I didn't even really talk about that, but whatever. Um, and this is actually pretty different in terms of sound presentation though. Um, you know, why I like the Odyssey MM500 is it really does give you, gives me this, you know, strong mid-range focus, uh, really, really resolving in the vocal region, but also gives me like this strong visceral impact to both the bass and the treble. Like they have this weightiness to the presentation. And I'm not sure how much of that comes down to the tuning or other aspects of the audio stuff that I just am not super well versed in. Um, but that's why I love this thing. And I will say versus the Empyrean, I do feel that the Empyrean kind of lacks that, that weightiness and that visceralness to the sound that the MM500 does really well. Now, what you get here with the Empyrean instead is, um, <clears throat> maybe a, 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 well, I would say definitely a more spacious sound, uh, here on the Empyrean, a little bit more kind of warm and relaxed in the low end, although you still do get some of that upper treble shimmer that, I don't know, frankly, both of these are, I would say, somewhat guilty of, although it can be a little bit addicting, I will be honest. Um, but yeah, you just get the stronger physicality here and you get the airier, more open sound here with the Empyrean, despite, you know, regardless of which pad you happen to be wearing. Uh, me personally, 
I honestly still prefer the, the vocal tune focus here of the Odyssey. It really is just like a microscope for vocals, and that's what I like. If you don't like that as much, this might be a little bit too intense for you in that way. And so maybe you would like something like the Empyrean too. Both of these are a pleasure to listen to, but those are the, if I'm, if I'm highlighting the differences, those are the things that stand out to me. Um, in terms of form factor, look, there's no beating the Empyrean too. Like I like the MM500 well enough. It's made of nice materials and it fits comfortably enough, but um, it's, it's not, it's not the, the engineering marvel that the Empyrean too is. Um, but yeah, let me check my notes, see if there's anything else I really wanted to say, but I don't think there is. I think that will just about do it for my thoughts here on the Meze Audio Empyrean 2. So yeah, honestly, just a, a lot of fun with this headphone. Um, like is typical with Meze, it is all about the build quality, but it's not just about the build quality and the aesthetics. I think they really did deliver on the sound quality here. Is it my absolute favorite sounding headphone? For me personally, no. It, but it's very good and it's very satisfying in a way that, frankly, I haven't had that experience with other Meze audio, head, audio headphones. And I was pretty excited to see here with the Empyrean 2. And if that sounds interesting to you, check it in the links down below. Of course, I gotta give it a score. Out of five stars, the Empyrean 2, I'm gonna give a very solid four stars. And uh, yeah, check it in the links down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next super video. Cheers.